Hi, Troy with Tsunami Compressed Air Solutions. Today we're going to walk you through a relatively simple installation of a Tsunami filter package. Uh, what we're going to install today is a Tsunami two-stage filter system with a regulator. Uh, it comes on a custom bracket. Uh, if you're installing one of our water separators or oil coalescing filters, that's going to have a slightly different bracket uh, to be utilized with it. But the installation process is going to track relatively true no matter what filter system you're putting in. Uh, another thing to note is depending on the type of air piping that you have in your facility, it's going to kind of alter your exact installation process. If you're using aluminum pipe, which we're going to show you today, that's great. Uh, if it's copper pipe, same relative process. The trickier one's going to be if you have older piping in your facility using black iron or galvanized pipe. Uh, those types of uh, systems require a little more uh, care and installation and sometimes it might be better just to hire an installer to do uh, the installation if you're not real familiar with how to handle installing using black pipe. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to map out in our air system where we want to install our filter. So if we have a drip leg in our air system that's relatively close to the application point, we're going to look for a location somewhere downstream uh, to install a riser pipe for our airline. Uh, check out what, some of our other videos on our website and it'll talk about plumbing a, uh, an air system uh, as well as there's a really quality video called Compressed Air System Basics uh, to check out and that kind of walks you through the drip leg, the riser pipe, and the need for drains on your tanks and, and on your drip legs and such. Uh, so the first thing is I'm gonna pick a point just downstream of this riser pipe that we're going to uh, be installing. So I wanna make sure I take all the air out of the system. You'll wanna open up ball valves wherever you can, open up the drain on the bottom of your receiver tank and drain it all out. At the very least, you wanna make sure that you do not have any air pressure in this piping for safety. You always wanna have your safety glasses on. We're gonna be doing some cutting with a, with a hacksaw, and so you might have some of that fine dust coming off of here. And so with all of that, we definitely wanna make sure we're taking uh, care to uh, protect ourselves. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna to wanna to get uh, a T. Some of this aluminum pipe uh, manufacturers, they have special fittings. Uh, they're gonna have you drill a hole in the top or in the side of the pipe, and then it clamps on to create that drop. Uh, if you've watched those other videos, it's while it's great that they have you pulling air from the top of your header pipe or from the side uh, to help water prevent running down to your air to your airline, uh, it's always advisable when you can spend a little extra money and have that six inch riser pipe coming up over and down. Water's going to have a much harder time going up six inches than it is going to be up one inch. So. Uh, I want to take my T-fitting, I want to mark it out. Now this aluminum pipe is going to slide into this T-fitting right to about the end of this thread. So I'm going to want to mark this pipe here or I'm going to cut it with the hacksaw and I want to mark it here. So I'm going to use this little section of pipe. It's going to get reused and connect the T. This section's removed and then we're going to tie this T into here. You may have to loosen up some fittings downstream and, and some bracketing that might be securing that pipe so that you have a little bit of leeway uh, to move things about. All right, so now I've cut away that section um, and I've loosened up the air piping downstream. And I do that because I want to try to alleviate and sometimes you can just loosen these brackets the first couple brackets, you can pop this out and you can flex that a little bit in order to get this first fitting on. You want to get that pushed in and then you need that little bit of push in order to line it up. And then you slide that in and then make sure that T's in an upward position. And you want to lock that down. And what, what these, most of these aluminum pipe fittings, they have an O-ring inside here. And so by locking this down, the little teeth are grabbing it. And the actual seal is being made by the O-ring, but the locking mechanism holds this all in place. And I want to secure this one by the drip leg. There we go. 
Then the next step is going to be to lay out your system to come up, over, and down like this. And what we're going to do, so I can pre-plumb most of this and you can gauge approximately how far down your wall. Obviously in this short video, uh, these drip drop lengths are a little bit uh, shorter than would normally be expected uh, depending on how heavy your header pipe is. Um, but anyway, so then you can actually install this pre-plumb system. And here you want to lightly secure it. You don't necessarily want to lock this completely into place, but you want it to be nice and snug and have the teeth of this T grabbing onto that aluminum pipe. Still gives me a little bit of ability to move it around uh, for when we do the install. So if for some reason you are in the middle of your installation and you need to get your air system up and running, what I'd recommend is at the bottom of this, you'd put a ball valve you know, most of these fittings are going to have, here normally you'd come out with an elbow and put this half inch NPT or whatever size thread you need to connect your filter system. But if you need to get your air system up and running to complete your installation another day, just simply put a ball valve on there, leave it closed. That way you can pressurize your air system and then you'd want to make sure all these connections are tight. I'm going to wait to tighten all those connections until the filter is installed. All right, so for this installation, I have our filter package. I have a half inch NPT elbow. I'm going to put some thread tape on that. And the thing about putting thread tape on while it's really convenient, you absolutely want to make sure that you leave the first one to two threads of that you're uh, wrapping the tape around free of the tape. And the reason for that is as you're screwing a fitting or your filter system in onto those threads, some of this Teflon tape can break loose. And so then you want that loose debris to actually get pushed up with thread tightening. So for our installation, I'm gonna come out with an elbow. Now many of these fittings you can install completely. And then the very next thing I'm gonna put on here is a ball valve. And I cannot exp tell you how important putting a ball valve here is. It's not so much that you need the ball valve uh, to remove the filter itself because you typically shouldn't be removing the filter at all. But the need for this is simple. If I have to service this filter, which I will because we're putting a two stage, which has an oil coalescing element, I'm not gonna wanna have to depressurize my entire air system to do it. I'm gonna wanna be able to close a ball valve. So then from here, I'm gonna put a half inch nipple. I'm gonna get that lined up. So now I know about where I wanna install that. And because none of this is fixed, I'm gonna loosen up this fitting. Now, if I'm using copper, I'm gonna lay all this out. I'm gonna fix my filter package before I even solder up the, the, all the joints. Um, if it's black iron, that's where it gets a little dicier because black iron requires threads on each connection point for your elbow and stuff. And it's harder to be fixed. So if I'm using black iron, one of the most important things I can stress is to use a union coupler. And what that's gonna allow me to do is I'm gonna be able to come off of, I'm gonna be able to plumb this whole thing in black iron. And if I put a union here, what it'll do is allow me to loosen the union up. Half of the union is gonna stay affixed to our assembly coming off the main header pipe. And then we affix the other part of that union to the filter package itself. And then that way it's gonna make mounting everything that much easier. So I'm gonna finish installing this onto the filter. I wanna get it nice and snug. And because I've left all of these other little couplings up on top loose, I'm gonna be able to slide this filter onto the pipe. Now on this filter package, it's two mounting bolts is more than enough for the uh, average weight. Um, if your mounting hardware isn't heavy duty, then you may want to mark all four and consider using all four. So now that I've got these mounting holes fixed, you'll notice that I don't have to worry about where our piping is configured right now because I won't finish tightening everything up until it's complete. So then I'm gonna slide this back down. Now since I'm gonna be mounting into uh, sheetrock, I'm not 100% sure if I've got uh, a, a studs behind here. I'm gonna drill my pilot holes for my sheetrock 
screws. Uh, this one uses ones that will screw into the sheetrock. Uh, can these, this particular one is, I think can hold up to 150 pounds. Uh, so we're going to use two of them for this installation. So I take a 5 16 to maybe a quarter inch drill, just drill in. And the nice thing about these using a Phillips screwdriver, uh, there are some that you just push into these holes. This particular type I like because they can screw into the sheetrock and I know I get a nice secure screw hole or bolt hole to secure my filter. Now depending on the size of the, of the screw head, you may or may not need a washer. I'm going to use a washer on these. So once you get one screw started, you'll be able to come in, get the other one started. Now doing it by hand is really nice and convenient. Or you can use a screwdriver or an impact driver. Just get it in there nice and snug, secured really well to the wall. Then you're going to want to take the gauge out of the box. And here, most of the time, there's some thread tape on the bottom. There is a wrench flat available on the, on the back side of this. But I have found that if you're strong enough, you can gently turn that gauge and secure it. Otherwise, you grab a uh, 3 8 wrench and drive that in until it's nice and secure. You'll want to, your zero to be wherever you need to be reading it from. So now that I've got that complete, the last step that I'm going to do before firing up the air system is to go through and make sure I have all of these pipe connections nice and tight so that I get a good solid seal on those pipes. And just like that, and then I can kind of adjust that. Now, if this leg length is really long, you could use some form of additional bracket. So each manufacturer is gonna have their own bracket. You may need to have some sort of spacer depending on how far off the wall you need to come. Uh, but then you can secure it for additional uh, reassurance as it were. If you have any questions, check us out online at tsunami.us.com or give us a call at 800-782-5752.